Hello, everybody, and welcome. So I am Alex, as some of you will know, and tonight this is going to be the first ever Reef Talk live stream. Uh, now, <clears throat> I might make this uh, a regular thing, although it won't be on a Friday ordinarily. This is just a one-off for today, um, but we will see how it goes. If it goes well and if you guys like it, we'll do it more. Um, so topic for today is going to be buying corals and how to buy corals. Uh, and I'm going to do this uh, this in two parts, right? So we're going to start by, I'll just talk you through kind of my thoughts and experiences, and then we'll come on to talking about, uh, uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about the, the live stream, I'll catch up. So I won't keep an eye on it as uh, as we go through, but I will catch up with it at the end and we'll just have a, a general chat. Now, this isn't supposed to be uh, kind of an expert guide. This isn't the definitive guide on everything you need to know about buying corals. I'm not the world's leading expert on this subject. However, I've been buying corals quite regularly, to be fair, for uh, about seven years. I have the same addiction you guys all do. Um, so <clears throat> I'll be sharing my thoughts and experiences and, and everything I've kind of learned over the uh, over the years. So there are kind of we'll start by kind of where you buy corals. So to start with, there are there are kind of there are two places really. There are two ways you can buy corals. You can either buy online or in your local fish shop. So let's start with uh, with local fish shops. So the benefit of buying in your local fish shop, of course, is you get to see it in the flesh, uh, and that is just can't be overstated how much of a benefit that is. Uh, it's just you see so much more. You see if it's healthy. You see its size, its true colours, all this sort of stuff. You can ask the shop to turn the lights onto white or blue or up or down or whatever. So there, there's a real benefit of that. <clears throat> um, but you, what you'll find is, and this is kind of one of the, the sort of the key things I, I find is, and I'll come on in a minute to go through kind of a list of the, the shops that I think are, are particularly good and worth a mention. Um, but what you'll find is that uh, you need to, you can go into a local fish shop, uh, particularly one if you've not been to before, and you rock up and there's not really an awful lot there. Variety isn't that great. Uh, you know, they might not even have that many corals. And so you walk away thinking it's it's rubbish and not worth a visit. But what I find is that you could walk into the best shop in the country. And if you're unlucky, they'll have a week like that. So shops stock up every single week and get new stock in. In the UK, it's mostly Thursdays. But every week they get new stock in. So what I find is that even with some of the really good shops, you need to dedicate yourself and go in every week uh, to get a, a really good idea of uh, of what you're seeing. So that's a, a and if you can kind of go and do like a like a little um, a little lap and do uh, two or three shops every weekend. If you've not got the time uh, with you with kids and other commitments, all that sort of stuff, then you, you lose out on this. But it's really good idea just to go regularly. They get turnover of, of stock coming in. They'll have sometimes when it'll be a flat period when. Maybe it'll be quite over the uh, over the summer or something, whatever. So go as often as you can. And you also get to see really cool stuff. So uh, my local fish shop is Reefkeeper Moss End, which is uh, in Berkshire, uh, just outside Windsor in uh, south of England. I go in there most weekends, often twice. And uh, I find that you see different stuff all the time. So you'll see a really cool fish that you've never seen before that you think, hmm, quite like that. Um, and you get to you get to see all that stuff that you've, you've never seen before. It's really good. And then you can kind of uh, make a note of it and go away and do some research, think about whether you want it, all that sort of stuff. So even if you kind of don't really get stuck in and uh, and buy something every week, you're likely to, to come across some stuff that you think is cool and that you might want to come back to another time. You also get to kind of chat to people. So the really good fish shops, certainly in the UK, and I'm sure it's the same everywhere else, the really good fish shops have really good engagement. They're really chatty, they're friendly, uh, and they'll talk to you. So if it's a, a little bit busier, it might be a little bit quicker, but uh, you get to go in and, and have a chat to, uh, to a few other people uh, and some fellow enthusiasts. You might meet and chat to a couple of other people as well, bond over a clownfish you're looking at or whatever. So it can be kind of a, a nice morning or a nice hour out. So, But an, the main benefit you get from it really is that you get to see uh, the stock turnover. So if you go into a shop once and you think it's a bit crap in here, go back again a couple of times, maybe uh, ideally kind of every week, but maybe a month or two apart and see what it's like. Give it the benefit of the doubt because corals often uh, come in and uh, 
and improve over time and you get better corals um, <clears throat> coming through if, uh, if there's nothing great first time out. So that's kind of, that is what I find is the key thing with shops. You have to go regularly or you can go into a great shop and not see anything really cool. Uh, yeah, so you see some cool stuff. Right, so, but the flip side of that is that if you have a, um, if you go into a shop and like I said, there's there's not a great selection or maybe you go in and there's uh, a couple of corals dying. In particular, there, there are some shops that they sell marines, but they're not really particularly expert at it. Maybe they're more into freshwater, maybe they're just starting or might be a number of other reasons. So if you go in and you see uh, corals that are dying, you know, a lot of skeleton showing, algae everywhere, it's probably a reasonable sign that they don't necessarily look after their corals so well. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't buy from them. Uh, it might just be they're having an off day, so, you know, go back another time. But I still do find there are some corals that are worth buying. What you've got to bear in mind, though, is if you've got all these corals that are, are half dead, they're probably, even if there's another coral in there that looks fine, they're probably going to struggle when they get back to your aquarium anyway, because they've been sat in this less than ideal water. So although I'm saying go back and, you know, check in a couple, every couple of weeks, don't write a shop off first time. If there are corals dying everywhere, it's probably a reasonable sign that it's not the best shop. Uh, but it's always worth asking as well. Just have a chat with the, the staff there and go, looks like a couple of corals are dying, what's going on? And they might explain that there's a problem or whatever. So always worth a chat. Um, good shops. So this is going to be a bit of a, a niche section for not only the UK, but the south of the UK. I'm going to run through kind of a list of what I think are that they're my favourite shops, really. The best shops that I think are within a reasonable distance of me. Uh, and they are Advanced Aquarium Consultancy, which is also known as AAC in Harlow, just north of London in Essex. Absolutely fantastic place. Great banter with all the staff there. And they've expanded recently. Really high-end SPS, nice high-end SPS, wild core and uh, captive bread. They've got a little farm at the back. Loads of equipment um, and just really friendly staff as well. Really good place. Loads of fish, inverts galore. They've always got like a million clean shrimp. Uh, and it's just, it's a fantastic place. It's one of my favorite shops. It's a bit of a trek for me, so I don't go there very often. But if you get, if it's within any, within a couple of hours, it is worth going and checking it out for uh, for a day trip. Then there is Reef Dreams in Winchester. Reef Dreams has, I've moved a little bit further away from it. So I don't go there quite so regularly, but it used to be the shop I go to all the time. It's similar. It's on the same kind of level as AAC, not quite as big. Um, but it's really good shop as well. Fantastic um, SPS corals in particular, but they've got a ton of LPS there as well. They usually have a fair few zoas kicking around. Great fish stock. They, I don't think they quarantine their fish, but they do treat them. So I feel more confident. There are a couple of places actually that I feel more confident buying from, and those are AAC in terms of fish, AAC and Reef Dreams. Uh, and, and the reason I feel more confident with them is because I think they look after their they look after their uh, their fish and you can ask them they might be halfway through a treatment cycle so you can just talk to them and find out what they're doing but they're really good shops uh, reef dreams in Winchester spot on place well worth a visit if you haven't been then my local shop reef keeper Moss End it used to be called reef keeper Windsor and there's a chain in the UK that many of you would have heard of called Maidenhead Aquatics Maidenhead Aquatics they've got I don't know 200 shops around the country and some of them aren't fantastic for marines. They're mainly kind of a freshwater shop and they're not all great for, for marines. They're still well worth a visit. And I still, there's one near me in Woking that's decent enough. I bought my clowns from there. They're wicked clowns, actually. Um, and I've bought a couple of corals from there. So they're still worth a look. But the reef keepers, then there's two of them so far, they're a step up. They're kind of like the Maidenhead Plus. They're saltwater specialists and they're really good. Um, and the, the, it's a quite a big shop as well. It's one of the biggest in the UK, I wouldn't mind betting, for salties. Uh, really nice friendly staff in there as well. Always a good laugh. Um, these shops so far are a little bit expensive, is the one thing I will say. And it's kind of, I suppose you say you get what you pay for, but they're, they're, they're at the, the higher end. So don't go in there expecting bargains. But even with that being said, they've got cheap stuff, particularly Reef Keeper Moss End. They usually have a fair few uh, cheaper frags, sort of 10 quid, 15 quid frags. 
there's a new shop opening soon in Ringwood, which is near Bournemouth, near or halfway between Bournemouth and Southampton, called The Ocean Project. And that is going to be run by uh, one of the guys who used to work at Reef Dreams, a guy called Sean. Uh, I've not been there yet because it hasn't opened. It's opening in a couple of weeks' time, I think. But I want to go down there and check it out. Sean's a really good bloke. Uh, he knows his stuff. He's a, a massive stickhead. Uh, so he'll have some, some great SPS there, and I think he'll do well. A uh, couple of other places. Innovation Aquatics in Southampton. Now, I've not been that uh, that many times. I don't go that often there, but it's a decent enough place. They've got some... Uh, some good fish in particular. Got a fair few coral trades as well, so that's fine. That's uh, well worth a visit. Portsmouth, Taylor's Marine Room. Often people haven't heard of Taylor's. It's an absolutely fantastic shop. It's a reasonable size. They've got a ton of um, of fish trays. Fish trays? Uh, sort of uh, fish tanks with uh, fish floating around in there, of course. And they've got a fair few coral trays as well. Some really nice stuff. Uh, high end, low end, a really good mix. And actually, uh, Innovation Aquatics is not as expensive as some of the other places. And Taylor's Marine Room is, is pretty cheap as well. Well worth a visit. Go and check it out. Uh, and the final place I've got on my list is Aquatic Emporium, which is in a place called Shepparton that 99% of you will never have heard of. I hadn't heard of it until I discovered Aquatic Emporium. So, right. <clears throat> uh, but that's worth a shot. It's quite a small place. But if you're anywhere near, where is it? It's kind of West Surrey, I guess you would say. So if you're anywhere near there, it's, it's worth swinging by. I wouldn't say do a road trip for it like with AAC Reef Dreams, but it's well worth a trip. And again, really friendly, really helpful. They're just, they're, so. They're, in fact, I'll give them a shout out for this because there have been a couple of times I've been in, not been in that many times, but a couple of times I've been in and I was, I'd ordered some salt in and it hadn't arrived in time. Uh, and they gave me some free, they, I'd run out and they gave me free salt so I could do a water change, which was crazy. I thought it was just really generous. Um, but anyway, they're lovely people in there as well. And that is worth uh, worth a look. So that is kind of, those are my thoughts on um, on uh, on local fish shops. I think they're, they're the, the place you should be going to because you get to see the coral in the flesh. And there's just no substitute for that. It's that there's, we'll come on to uh, online in a second. And I buy a lot of corals online with some uh, caveats, but there's no substitute for seeing corals in the flesh. So check out your local fish shop and go there uh, as often as you can, basically. So online then. Right. Oh, online is is tricky. So I'll go through a list of the, the places that I find in the UK that are really good for online as well. Um, but I'm always slightly reluctant to buy corals online because you never quite know what you're getting. Now, there are two kinds of online vendors. There's your professional vendors, uh, like Prestige Reef, who you will have heard of, of course, YouTuber. Uh, and there are your semi-professional, let's say, vendors who sell on uh, eBay or um, other places. They might have their own website, that sort of stuff. And some of the, the kind of semi-professional vendors are actually really good. Um, there's a place called uh, Fragging Mad. They do a load of Zoas, Acans, and that sort of stuff. Really good place. And I bought some, uh, some some really nice stuff from them in the past. But kind of the 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 bad end of that spectrum is is really bad, and you want to avoid them. There was I did a video recently. I can't remember what it was about, but I found a clip. I wanted to talk about uh, corals being called like toxic green chalice or whatever stupid name well just putting the word toxic in front of it to charge bump the price up 20 quid and i go, i went onto ebay and found this guy selling it i can't remember what the the name of the shop was and i probably shouldn't say anyway i don't want to flame him uh but it had this a coral that was just so overexposed saturation cranked right up and you could just tell i think it was a duncan or something or a, a, a trumpet coral colostrea and you could just tell it looked there was no way it was going to look like that so that's one of the kind of my main, that's why I'm slightly reticent to buy corals online, particularly from those kinds of places. However, there are two other places that are well worth checking out online. And ultimately, if you know what you're getting and you're comfortable that it's not necessarily going to look like, like the photo, then it's worth a crack, especially if you've got protection like with PayPal. Um, but the proper places that I would say, so there are two places, two types, the proper professional shops like uh, Prestige Reef that I mentioned. And also, what was the other one? Ultimate Reef, so forums. Forums, I reckon at least 50% of my corals 
have come from Ultimate Reef, buying from other hobbyists. And there are just, for a start, Ultimate Reef, if you're not on there, go and sign up. It's a really good place to get advice. Uh, and you can check out other people's tanks, all that sort of stuff. You can see my full tank fan. I update it far more regularly than I update uh, YouTube. But you can buy loads of corals on there, and it's really good. So, And there are massive benefits. The downside is photography isn't always that great. So you might have people taking photos where they're holding the camera at an angle, so you get kind of blurred vision through the uh, through the glass. In fact, you know what? One second. I'm just going to change this lighting because this is not sufficient. I look like I'm orange. Right. So, yeah. So so not everybody on, on Ultimate Reef is, is, is great at coral photography. Uh, so you kind of got to take that, bear that in mind. Some people are, are much better, but people don't, on Ultimate Reef, people don't tend, and on forums generally, I would say, they don't tend to try to make their corals look like something they're not. They try to take kind of accurate photos, is what I would say. So, yeah, so, so they do try to take accurate photos. And, and either way, one of, one of the things with buying corals online from anywhere is if it's something that you don't know what it is. So if it's got a, a funky name, a nice SPS with a, a funny name, uh, not Walt Disney, but you know the, the type, the, the crazy name, volcano eruption or whatever, some, some nonsense, then you don't necessarily know what you're getting because it's not a coral you can identify. If it's something like a red Monty Digi or a green plating Monty, Monty Cap, the chances are it's going to be fine. You know what you're getting, so it doesn't really matter what the photo looks like. Um, and that's why I kind of I kind of feel more comfortable buying stuff on Ultimate Reef that I know what it is. So if you're getting a barley green slimer or uh, an Aquapora valida, really common corals that you know what they look like, they're fine. Um, and you it doesn't really matter. If you get there, it's a little bit faded or it's not, not the colors aren't quite spot on it's probably just because the parameters weren't spot on in in the previous tank so that's fine and you can also if you've got if you see a coral advertised anywhere online google it especially if it's got if it hasn't if it's got a ridiculous name or a proprietary name that uh, a vendor has chosen you're not going to have much luck but if it's got a name like a red monty digi or color or whatever google it and see if you can find images of what the coral might look like now when i do that I'm often really tempted to go and try to find a picture of the, the coral that looks the best and say, oh, well, that must be it. So you've got to resist that temptation and just try to find a, a picture of what the coral genuinely looks like. Um, so when you're buying, so, but with that being said, I don't want to say, I'm not saying that um, SPS corals with funny names and all this sort of stuff, made up names, I'm not saying they're, they're bad. Uh, I'm a, as much of a sucker for those as anyone else, and I fall into the marketing. And actually, some of them are especially nice corals. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy them. And actually, the the better professional online vendors will take photos that they try to take. They'll try to take a photo that shows what the coral looks like. I would say more often than not. Most vendors are not all. Most online vendors, this isn't just exclusive to the UK, I'm not singling anyone out, but most vendors will try to take uh, photos that represent what the coral you're getting is. People who care about their reputation, certainly. But perhaps I would say most people are tempted to, if you're going to alter it, you, you might do some post-processing or an orange, use an orange lens, which is fine as long as it still looks accurate. But most people are probably tempted to try to dress the coral up in its best light. So even with a really good, well-photographed corals, I would say most of them are kind of, they might, you'll you'll get a good representation, but I reckon the last 10%, that little extra pop and that little extra color is probably a little bit of creative editing just because people get carried away. I do it myself. I take videos of the tank, all my own tank all the time and photos all the time. And I find myself firstly wanting to, to make sure I'm representing what the coral actually looks like. But there are times, particularly with photos, when I think, oh, you know, just change some of the sliders a little bit on the editing tools and suddenly it starts to look really nice, not like unnatural. So I kind of think that's understandable. And also you'll find top-down photos. So I take photos of my corals top-down mostly because it's when they look the best. And uh, professional online vendors will usually do that as well. When I sell corals personally, I sell, I, I do uh, photos, I take photos top-down. It's, it's the most, it's the best way to get a 100% accurate picture of what the coral looks like. But just bear in mind, of course, that when you're looking at a coral top down, 
it's going to look amazing. And when you're looking at it, at it through the glass, which is what you'll get 99% of the time when you look at it at your own tank, uh, it just it looks a little bit like the glass takes something away. It just washes out the colors a tiny bit and makes it a little bit, not blurred, but kind of a little bit less high res. Um, so if you can see photos sort of taken side on, then that's better. And you, you'll get you'll probably get a better idea. But to be honest, you're likely to get top down photos as much as anything, because it's, it's much easier if you've got a coral farm to take photos top down rather than try to shoot past uh, a dozen corals that might be in the way. So, uh, yes, what other things? So it's not just color, though. <laughs> so one of the other things I find with versus with buying online versus buying in a shop is the size of the coral. Now, I personally like small frags. I like that I can buy someone, uh, buy a frag that I can put anywhere I want. I don't have to think I've got this almighty foot-long coral that I'm going to have to block out the light for everything else, and I'm going to have to think about how uh, how I putty it in place and all that sort of stuff. I like small corals. You can put them pretty much wherever you want them. It does mean that I end up uh, buying far too many corals, which is just pure stupidity. I know I'm doing it. I still carry on. Um, but I like small corals. But what you will, and if you know you're getting a small coral, fine, no problem. But sometimes if you look online, it's not always easy to tell how big the coral is. And this isn't because vendors are trying to trick you into thinking you're getting a six inch long coral. It's because you can't, there's no perspective. You might have, you might have a couple of things that will give you clues. So you might have some egg crate in the background of the photo. So you can kind of get a rough idea of, of how big it is, or you might be able to see the frag plug. But sometimes it's you don't even notice that. And then you the coral arrives and you think, oh, that's actually pretty small. That's not what I thought. So always think if you're buying online, excuse me, always think about um, the size of the coral as well and try to look for clues to see how big it is. Um, smaller corals are, smaller frags are, of course, always usually, usually cheaper anyway. Um, so that's another good thing. So if you're buying a, if you're buying a coral that's extraordinarily expensive, probably going to be bigger i would say but check check the size um but yeah so the, that's the benefit of, of buying in person really because you see it you see what it's like oh also so not only do you see colors size all that sort of stuff uh you'll see what it actually uh if it's in good health there's something you can when you when you've seen enough corals and you might not get there at first but the more you see corals the more you'll just notice corals that just don't look healthy. It's You can't put your finger on why. They kind of might look a little bit thin or light in colour, and you'll just get a good feel for something that's really healthy. So if it's a an acan or a, uh, a micromusa, should I say, uh, if it's a micromusa or a torch, nice extended polyps, really fleshy, looking, uh, looking fat, basically, <laughs> or thick. Kids say thick, don't they? Uh, so uh, that's the sort of thing you want to look for. And on um, SPS corals, uh, you don't want any signs of white bleaching, of course. Growth tips are always good. And the number one is, is basing out. So you always want uh, any, pretty much any coral, really, to have based out over the uh, the frag plug. So it, it doesn't look like it's freshly cut. There's not necessarily anything wrong with buying freshly cut corals. I bought plenty myself. I bought a, a 150 quid tiny little nubbin of, uh, of home wrecker uh, uh, that was uh, freshly cut. It was two weeks old. And it's fine. Um, so you don't, there's not necessarily anything wrong with it, but it's far better if you've got something that's based out and you can see is healthy and, uh, and has been settled for a long time. Cause then you're not cutting it and then moving it straight away. Kind of two stressing events, you're spacing them out over a bit more time. Um, also you need to look for frag plugs. So if you buy a, a coral that is on a brand new shiny as hell white frag plug, it probably looks quite nice at first. And you might think, hey, I'm not getting any algae in my tank that I don't want. But that is a fair sign that it is a freshly cut coral. Again, it's not necessarily a, a sure sign because some white, I've got my uh, display tank over there, my frag tank, sorry, that's got corals that have been settled for weeks and the frag plugs are still completely white. But if it's bone white, looks like someone's been polishing it uh, or covering it in Tipex, then it's probably a sign it's been cut soon. And 
if it's something that's fairly common, there's no harm in walking away. It's not going to get it's not going to get sold, and if it does, there will be other ones along. So, and some shop, some shops will even either take a deposit or just put it put it aside for you for a week or so anyway. So, look for frag plugs to see if they're nice and dirty. Not you don't necessarily want sort of bubble algae and green hair algae on it and all that sort of stuff, but just a little bit of you know covering over uh, over the white so it doesn't look glaringly white. Um, Tank hardened. Tank hardened. Did I mention tank hardened? So that's one of the reasons I buy, main reasons I buy from Ultimate Reef is because I don't like uh, imported wild caught corals. I have, I think, two in my tank. One was bought from a, another hobbyist that was he'd had for something like six months a year. And the other uh, is, <laughs> is getting overgrown by a, a vicious Monty at the moment. But I don't like them. I, I kill them. I buy wild caught colonies. I have done in the past. And I just, I just can't keep them. It's just, I, I don't, well, I was about to say, I don't know what it is. It's because they're less hardy. That's all there is to it in my personal experience anyway. So, um, so you get, so buying them from Ultimate Reef and from fellow hobbyists, basically forums, trustworthy forums, uh, you get tank hardened corals that have been in captivity for years sometimes and certainly months on end. And they're much more likely to, to survive. So that's a really good uh, bonus of, of buying uh, corals from forums uh, rather than shops and uh, online vendors. Uh, you also get, so also, and this is this is going to start sounding like an advert for Ultimate Reef. It's not. <laughs> but uh, you also get better sizes, generally bigger, bigger frags, um, much fairer prices. Hobbyist to hobbyist prices are generally pretty good, and most people are, are pretty generous. It's such a, it's a, it's a great kind of a community hobby, isn't it? I think people tend to look out for each other. Um, so you get good prices as well. And you tend to get variety. Some of the kind of the, the spicier stuff I've got, the a bit more unique and rare stuff I've got through Ultimate Reef. And in fact, whilst I'm plugging it, I do sell corals. If you ever see, if you ever want to buy some of my corals, I sell them on Ultimate Reef when I do. Not all the time, but if you want to buy them, that's where I tend to, to do it. So that is Ultimate Reef. Uh, that is online. Oh, that's oh yes. One other thing, Ultimate Reef. I know I'm banging on about this, but it just it's so it's such a good place to buy corals. Forums generally. One of the really good things is you get to see not just photos of of the frag itself, but you get to see photos of the mother mother colony it came from. So you can tell if it's just a tiny little frag that's been fragged and probably wasn't ready, or if it's enormous an enormous five year old colony that's completely settled and is probably likely to be bomb proof. People also put up their um, their tank thread, so you build threads so you can have a look and see. Um, you can see what their tank looks like if they've got problems. You, you might find someone's got uh, acro eating flatworms or Monty eating nudibranchs or whatever. But realistically, you'll just get a chance to see what their tank is like. And if someone's got a good, healthy tank, they're probably going to have decent frags. Uh, and people who've been in the hobby longer tend to be the more generous and tend to do better sizes, better prices, and they care about help. It's, it's more about it's about making a bit of pocket money, but it's more about kind of helping people out. So it's really good to be able to see people's build thread uh, and see exactly what uh, what you're getting. Pre it's pretty rare, I find, even with sort of the best online vendors. And until uh, Brexit happened, I used to I bought a couple of corals from Euro Corals in Germany, fantastic place. And every now and then they would do they would post photos of the mother colonies. But it was pretty rare. Um, and most people don't post photos of the mother colony, which is a real shame because a frag can look totally different to a mother colony. They, they almost always do, even if it's something like a zoa, and you can kind of get a rough idea of what it might look like. If you see a, a mother colony of 50 heads of the zoa, which it's likely to grow into fairly quickly, some of them can look frankly a bit crap and others can look awesome some of them will be form a really tight mat so they're all really close heads um, and they can look fantastic so seeing the mother colony is it's a rare treat <laughs> um, but it's uh it's a benefit of buying from forums um I think, oh when you full tank shots of course i've said all that so right what else have we got so there's i said i'd talk through some of the my favorite online vendors now i don't buy that much online so if you've got, and this, the whole point of this is to, to share knowledge and experiences, and I'll come to the comments in a bit. I can see there's a load, so keep it coming. I will catch up with you. Um, share everything that you know. Share the best places you see. You guys have probably, half of you guys have probably uh, used more places online than I have. But 
the best places, in my personal opinion, are first off, Prestige Reef. For a start, I know I know Ryan as a fellow YouTuber. I talk to him occasionally. He's a good bloke, so I'm bound to give him a plug. Uh, but I did go on the on the sly. I went down and uh, and had a look at his farm. I don't know, a month or so ago, uh, and I was really impressed. It's uh, his photos. His photos are the other way around. His photos aren't as good as the actual corals, and he doesn't try to to make them look too fancy. He might put an orange lens on or a yellow lens on to take away the blue lights, but he doesn't try to make his corals look like something that they're not. Spot on place. I would thoroughly recommend visiting if you can, but if not, go online. They've got loads of stuff. Signature frags. Now, this is I've seen Jay's real reef, and he was messaging me on Instagram before this. I've seen you in the chat. Signature frags is another really good place. They are not especially generous with their sizes, but if you know that, and you should be able to see from the photos, they don't try to hide it. Um, so if you know that and you're happy with a, a small frag that's going to grow out anyway, they have some really nice and more unique stuff as well, especially kind of on the SPS side. Oh, SPS side, they've got some, they've got a bit of everything to be honest. So Signature Frags is really good. I bought um, from them a few times. I kind of know the guy, Christian. I met him at Coral Freaks, the coral show in the UK a couple of years ago. Again, really nice bloke as well, which helps. And that, in fact, those two, uh, Signature Frags and Prestige Reef, they'll look after you. So if you uh, have a problem with a coral you buy, they look after you. Ryan's attitude in particular, Prestige Reef, he doesn't want you to have a bad experience. Hope you don't mind me revealing your trade secrets. Um, but he will take care of you. And uh, and Christian is the same, Signature Frags the same. Other places, Frag Farm. So that was a, a coral farm I visited ages ago, about two or three years ago, I think. And um, it's they've been talking about expanding for a long time. It hasn't come around. Doug, if you're watching this, uh, give us an update on when you're going to expand. They mainly sell to the trade, uh, but they do have a website, fragfarm.co.uk. Uh, and they sell some stuff to IBS. It's generally quite a small selection, but they've got some really nice stuff. Uh, and Doug knows his stuff really well, been keeping corals for years, so knows what to do. The Coral Centre is the next place on my list. So this is another frag farm, a coral farm I went to visit, again, a couple of years ago, same time as Frag Farm. Uh, and they kind of have stacked um, uh, tanks. So they've got a ton of real estate down there, a ton of corals. Um, and I would say that's more at the... that's so. A lot of the stuff I've talked about is kind of higher end stuff because it's what I like. Um, and the Coral Center is not high end stuff. It's more of your kind of beginner friendly stuff. It's it's Zoas, hardy, soft corals, um, standard uh, LPS corals like Duncan, Acans. Duncans are really nice still. And some basic beginner SPS corals. I did go in there a month or so ago, but I didn't have a proper look around. So I don't know if they've changed too much, but I, I looked on their website recently and it's kind of, it's the, the beginner end. So if you're into the beginner stuff, Coral Center is the place to go, and they're really cheap. Now, I mentioned earlier eBay in the context of people, sellers you have to watch out for. And that's not exclusive. If you're an eBay seller, I'm not just having a pop. Not everybody is the same. But there is one place on eBay that has a really good reputation called Jason's Aquatics. Now, if I've got, if I've got that wrong, someone correct me in the, in the chat because uh, you you guys will know what I mean. Some of you will know what I mean. I've never bought anything from Jason's Aquatics, but people on Ultimate Reef buy from there all the time. And if you go, there, there's an eBay store that has, I don't know, it's kind of, it's the, the photos are, they don't, they're not exaggerating. There's no saturation bumped up or whatever. There's no orange lenses to show. It looks like it's been in the Holocaust or whatever. Uh, nuclear bomb, <laughs> wrong term. Uh, so they, they do basic photos but the, the eBay store is a bit inconsistent. So you might find that there's, you'll go on one week and there's nothing there at all. And you think, uh, right, this is a bit crap. But then other times you go on and there's a load of stuff there. And the corals, the corals that people post photos of on forums that they bought from Jason's Aquatics are spot on. So uh, I would buy from them, but every time I go on, they don't have anything there. But if you've got the patience, well worth checking out. And the final place I wanted to mention online was Fragging Mad, the place I mentioned earlier. Um, they started as mainly Zoas, but they've expanded a little bit and have some nice kind of Monty's, the, the Crazy Tea, uh, Alter Ego, all that kind of. Those are kind of the good places that... I'm pausing. Am I back? I lost connection. We're back. I didn't say anything. You haven't missed anything. We're all right. So 